welcome back to King's Decor Corner. If this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you so, so much for stopping by. I hope that you will go ahead and click the subscribe button and also be sure to hit the notification bell so you will not miss any upcoming videos. For my faithful family members, you guys know I love you so very much. And guys, today I'm so super excited because I am back to share with you all an update on what's going on with my health and everything. And guys, this is the follow-up video to my live shopping haul I did um, about a week ago, maybe a week and a half ago. And in that video, I did say that I was going to come on here and share with you guys um, an update with my health and I was going to share a shopping haul and just some other things. So there's a lot of things I want to share in this video today. So without any further ado, let's hop right into it. Okay guys, so if you have been following me for a while, at least for this year, you know that um, for the last couple of weeks or at least a month or so, I have been talking about uh, my health and I've been missing from YouTube for like the first four months of the year um, because I had not been feeling well. I had a lot going on. And then I did come on and share with you guys um, just what was happening and I was in the midst of it all, literally. <laughs> and so, still I am, but now um, I've been having some workup and everything. Um, and if you guys have missed my previous videos, please be sure to go back and watch those if you kind of want to hear where things were. And now we're going to pick up to where we are currently. So over the last few weeks since my last video uh, where I was trying to figure out what exactly was going on and I gave some speculations about what I thought and then a lot of you ladies left comments in the video um, saying that you thought that it might be pre-menopause. That was one thing that I thought that it was. I also mentioned that I thought maybe I had long COVID because in January my family and I did have COVID. And so many of the symptoms that I was experiencing were similar to the symptoms of long COVID. So, so in the meantime, I saw so my family doctor, my gynecologist, and I had also gone to see a weight management doctor because my weight had increased significantly from like October until January. So in the meantime, um, we did a bunch of lab work, we did a bunch of tests, we did a lot of diagnostic um, exams and everything. Then in the meantime, I did go to see a functional medicine doctor. So if you guys are not familiar with a functional medicine doctor, they are a specialist that basically look at your whole body. Like most doctors, they kind of work on their primary focus. So a cardiologist is gonna work on your heart. Um, a nephrologist is gonna work on your kidneys. Um, um, an endocrinologist is going to work on, um, usually they work with you if you have issues with your thyroid or if you have diabetes, like endocrinology, your endocrinology system, your endocrine system, I should say, they work on, the endocrinologist will work with issues regarding your endocrine system. Um, you know, a neurologist is going to work on your brain. So, there, so most doctors are specialized. But a functional medicine doctor is someone who kind of looks at the whole big picture, right? Which is what I needed because I was like, I'm going to all these specialists or doing all these kind of specialized things. And, and we did kind of the general things and they weren't really revealing much. And so I wanted to work with someone that could maybe look at a picture, my picture from a holistic perspective to kind of tell me what's going on. So some things did come out of that. And some of you ladies were right in that... I, and I was kind of right when I said that I felt like I was dealing with long COVID. They did confirm that um, a lot of the symptoms that I was dealing with were related to COVID. And so they gave me, or they told me to take some vitamins in particular to help deal with some of those symptoms of COVID um, to boost my energy up and things like that. Um, and I'll, I don't have that list of those vitamins in front of me right now, but I'll share that with you guys. Um, I'll either put it on the screen here or I'll put it in the description box below. Um, I did, I was working with my gynecologist because um, my menstrual cycle had changed and 
and we were trying to figure out why that happened. And so in dealing with a functional medicine doctor, they explained that COVID can change your menstrual cycle. And so for me, the issue was it extended my cycle and that was causing me to have anemia. And so um, that really was the culprit behind a lot of the things that was happening also, the anemia. So I kind of found myself in a place where I was dealing with chronic anemia. Um, and also, so from the time I had COVID up until most recently here that we found out what was that this was the cause of it um, I was dealing with that so that was um, an issue that I was having to address and then correct um, and dealing with the issues of long COVID and also so those were that that was like a set of issues that was kind of going on on its own but then also they mentioned to me something called um, metabolic syndrome. So I was like, okay, so that is, I have hypertension, I take blood pressure medicine, I have for a couple of years now, and they said that I, although I'm not diabetic, but I have pre-diabetes, which my primary care doctor did tell me that once they did it on my blood work and everything. And so they said, what? What? has been happening is that this is like the perfect storm obesity hypertension and pre-diabetes is like the perfect storm for metabolic syndrome so generally if you have obesity hypertension and diabetes then you have a metabolic syndrome which basically means that you are the perfect storm for to be at risk for other diseases so let me read to you exactly what it is. I wrote it here. Um, metabolic syndrome, which is a cluster of conditions that occur together, which increases your risk for heart disease, stroke, and type 2 diabetes. These conditions include high blood pressure, high blood sugar, and excess body fat around your waist, and abnormal cholesterol or uh, abnormal triglyceride levels. Um, metabolic syndrome is increasingly common in the U.S., but it can be controlled and or reversed with aggressive lifestyle changes because it is closely linked to overweight or obesity and inactivity. And so when I was told this and I thought about it, I was like, you know what? My weight was increasing because I did, when I thought back about it, I, I'm the kind of person that I'll go hard when I know I got somewhere to go, somewhere to some event that I want to look nice. I'm like, okay, I'm going to um, try to cut back on eating. I'll do whatever I need to do to lose a few pounds so I can look cute for our anniversary or something. And then once that's over, then I'll go back to eating the way I always was, you know, eating snacks all day throughout the day, just kind of snacking on things. Um, drinking the frappuccino drinks from Starbucks or McDonald's. They have one that I, I used to really love, the caramel frappuccino. Or um, just eating chips and popcorn. Just all the things, you know, whatever. Just snacking throughout the day. If I felt like I was bored, I'd snack on something. If I felt like I was tired, I'd snack on something. And so the weight was coming on because I was eating constantly, basically throughout the day. And that does a number on your blood sugar because your insulin levels, every time you put food in your mouth, your body is producing insulin. And if you're producing more insulin than you actually need, your body doesn't have anything to do with it. So you become resistant to it your body doesn't respond to the amount of insulin that you have and so I was insulin resistant was am probably still because that's something I'm working on now um, but insulin resistant so when they took my lab work they saw that I'm not in the diabetes range just yet but like barely close there so that's why they said well you're pre-diabetic so I have to 
I'm working on looking at it as though I am diabetic. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna treat myself as a diabetic, so I need to, because I don't wanna become one, I need to act now so that I don't become one. So I need to do the things that I need to do so that I can break this cycle. So that number one, like my doctor told me, I told you guys what I've been doing is trying to lose weight and trying to, um, you know, change my lifestyle completely. So I'll tell you guys what I've been doing, but what they suggested as it relates to things that you can do to prevent or reverse the metabolic syndrome is to number one, get at least 30 minutes of physical activity most days. That's what they say. They say eat plenty of veggies and fruits along with lean protein and whole grains. And also they say maintain a healthy um, weight. So for me, what I was told to do, I think I mentioned this to you guys in my previous video, but in working with uh, the doctor that I went to see, because I told you guys, because I went to see the weight management doctor because I was like, I'm getting all this weight and I want to get on those semi-glutides, like the injectable pins that make you lose weight, the Ozempic, the Munjaro, the whatever they are, those things. And he was like, you have a bleeding problem and you need to get that controlled before I put you on anything. So I'm not going to do that. But he did give me a meal plan. He told me how to eat. So he said, you need to um, don't eat before 9 a.m. or after 7 p.m. You need to, for breakfast, have a protein shake. And then you can have some berries to go along with that. Um, you only drink water. Do not drink anything other than water that has sugar in it, do not drink it, only water. And for lunch, you'll have your leftover dinner. So your dinner should be protein and vegetables. That's it. And so for your lunch, it's gonna be your leftover dinner. And for your snack, you'll have another protein shake. So my breakfast is at 9 a.m., my lunch is at 12, my snack is at three, my dinner is at six, and I don't eat anything after seven. So, if I'm eating within that window, if you guys are familiar with intermittent fasting, he has built into my meal plan for me to be intermittent fasting. So, intermittent fasting also helps with reducing your blood sugar. Um, I wasn't really thinking about that when he told me to do this, but I was like, okay, I'm just going to follow what he told me to do. So, that's this is what I've been doing for the last month. Um, I kind of started this in May but not really because I had all this testing and everything going on so I was having to do too many things so I really didn't start it until um, I think May 31st was the day that I was like okay I'm gonna start this June 1st so I was like June 1st I'm serious about doing what he told me to do so he also started me on um, metformin which is a medicine for people with diabetes because I'm insulin resistant so he was like we have to make your body not be resistant to insulin so we need to correct that so you have to take this medicine in order to correct that so I'm taking it but I told him that this is not something that I want to be on forever the idea is that I want to get off some of the medicine that I'm on I told you guys that I was already on a whole bunch of medicine but so I was like, okay, fine, I'll take another thing. But the idea is that ultimately I want to be off all medicine. But so I that my I told you guys the time frames I eat and the foods that I eat. And so I started doing that and he told me to walk 10 minutes every two hours because I was like not in a place where I could walk any more than that because I was like exhausted and tired all the time. So I was like, I don't have any energy to do anything more. So I was like, okay, no problem. So in the month of June, doing what he told me to do, I did my last video, I told you guys I lost 10 pounds in 14 days. Well, now I've lost a total of 21 pounds in 31 days doing what he told me to do, drinking my protein shake, eating meat and vegetables, which I'm gonna say the 
probably the last 14 days or so of June, at least the last seven for sure, but the last 14 days or so in June, I've started really kind of cutting back on the meat because I've noticed that eating a lot of meat doesn't really agree with me. Um, so I started cutting back on that amount of meat. So I've been drinking more of the protein um, and just eating like chicken or fish. I was doing like I had pork chops. I had, um, you know, other meats, ground beef and things like that. But I was like, this is not really working for me. So I replaced the ground beef with ground turkey. And I was like, okay, that's a little better. So then I started eating more ground turkey and I'm eating more chicken, eating more fish. So I'm like, that's easier on me when I say it's not working with me like it my stomach would just kind of get upset I was not feeling I would feel like nauseous and so the the meats were just not really agreeing with me um so I started cutting back on the meat and just eating more vegetables and till I just switched out the meats and now I realized that's working better for me but um and then I also started walking um 15 minutes instead of 10 minutes and then I added another workout 30 to 45 minutes in the evenings like after work um, I'll either walk around my neighborhood or I'll get on the treadmill and that's helped out too a lot I started doing that like the last two weeks in June um, just because I started feeling better I started having more energy and I was like okay I can do this and so um, and I don't feel exhausted or feel like sometimes at the beginning I felt kind of nauseous like after I walk walk or work out more I was like oh, okay I should I overdid it so I didn't want to go hard too fast but as I started feeling better I was like okay I can increase five minutes and then I was like okay now I'm doing more five minutes then maybe I can go 30 minutes after work and then like I do it two, uh, two or three days and then like on the third day if I felt like oh, okay I did too much then I would just slow down on the next day like not go so fast so I just kind of increased it like that um, so I'm super excited that I'm down 21 pounds already um, and but more so I feel like my blood pressure is getting better I just feel overall like just like I'm coming to life again like I'm starting to feel like myself like I'm totally not there yet guys I'm totally not but I'm just feeling so much better and it just m makes me feel like I can see that I'm on the right path so um, I think on the 25th of this month of, of June my husband bought a juicer and that guys has been a game changer it's been a game changer so I've never I, I said I'm eating vegetables and everything, and I totally have been, but they've been all cooked, right? So then we were watching videos on YouTube, and then somehow I came across someone juicing something. And so I have a blender, of course, here. So I was like, okay, maybe I could, oh, it was a video on juice juices that you can do, do to reduce your blood pressure. And so I was like, okay, I want to try that because if I could drink a juice of vegetables instead of taking a blood pressure pill I would rather do that right so I found this video and so I mixed up I um, blended up the vegetables that they suggested and tried the juice and it was you know it was okay and so I was like okay but it was kind of messy and I, you know it was a bunch of cleanup so my husband ordered a juicer for me and when we got it, when it, when it came in, and he was like, oh, I ordered you a juicer. It'll be here tomorrow. And I was like, oh, okay. So I was super excited, right? When it came in, and he unboxed it and everything and plugged it up, and he mixed me up a drink, and it was amazing. Well, I say it was amazing, but it wasn't amazing. <laughs> like, it didn't taste great, but it was amazing in that I was really excited to have it and it just really felt like nutrition going through my body now the taste of it was um, obviously it tastes very green it tastes kind of bitter but it was a little bit sweet but um, it just tastes like nutrition is what it tastes like it's not my favorite taste 
but you know, I was like, I'm not here for the taste, I'm here for the benefits, right? So I've been drinking green juice ever since. Every day I have green juice because I just feel like it's doing something for my body that it absolutely needs. Um, and of course, if you guys want to Google green juice, then you can, you'll see all the benefits. But I can tell you what we put in it. We have kale, spinach, um, cilantro, parsley, cucumbers, green apple, and celery. So, um, and it's, you know, a few of each of all of those things in the juice. And it's all juiced together. Um, and it is just like a glass full of goodness. Like I said, I, it's, and to, I feel like the amount of juice that I have to drink, it will be difficult for me to eat that many greens in a day. Like, I can eat a salad, but there's only so much salad you can eat. And there's, after a while, salad gets to be boring, or you want to drench it with salad dressing, which then you lose the benefit of the salad when you drown it in, in salad dressing. So, um, to drink it is easier for me than to try to eat a whole giant bowl of salad. So, I'm like, I can drink green juice every day. And if I need to drink it throughout the day or two or three, four times a day, then I'll do that if I need to. Because I just feel like it's doing my body good. <laughs> and so then another drink that I've been drinking is beet juice. Now, guys... Your girl is not here for beets, like, no ma'am, no, <laughs> not at all. But if, again, I'm not here for the taste, I'm here for the benefit. And honestly, it's not as bad as you would think, um, especially when, the way my husband mixes it up for me. So he usually mix like a beet with, um, I think a carrot, an apple, and some spinach, and I think maybe parsley. Um, don't worry about the ingredients right now. I will definitely be doing videos on making um, juices that we do um, because my husband is like really the one that's been researching it and making these for me. Like he is the one who ordered the juicer. He's the one who found the recipes. He's the one been making them for me. He showed me how to make it. So I've made them a few times also, but he's the one that's really like, you know, I told him, you know, I did it the first time because I was like, oh, look what I found. I, I can, if I can find, um, if I could drink something that could replace blood pressure medicine or reduce my blood pressure naturally, then I would rather do that as opposed to taking medicine. And then he like jumped on the bandwagon and like took over. And so I was like, wow, okay, great. And so um, he's really been helpful and with that. So. Um, I'll definitely be doing videos on the different juices that we make and sharing it with you guys. Those are the two that we've made so far, but definitely there's others. I mean, I've mixed up some other stuff just to see how it tastes. Like I've mixed in some blueberries and watermelon and um, strawberries, but you guys know that my doctor told me not to drink fruit. So I'm not drinking those drinks. I've made those for Addison and my husband to try because they can obviously drink fresh uh, fruit juice but for me right now I'm still just drinking the water or the green juice um, and when he made the green juice for me it did have an apple in it and the uh, beet juice did have an apple in it I think uh, I think he did put an apple in it but I'm like one apple in the midst of these vegetables I think will be okay if it's doing something for me so <laughs> but I will make sure with my next appointment with my doctor that you know he's in agreement with it but it's not like I'm drinking a soda or that I'm drinking apple juice you know from the store or whatever that's a whole fresh apple that's been pressed into the juice that's mixed in with a bunch of green vegetables so yeah so that's where I am that's what I've been doing this is where I am with my weight. I have to say I have never lost so much weight in a month and also doing it in a way that has been completely healthy. You know, <laughs> I'm sure we've all done some things, you know, where we lost weight, but it wasn't probably the best way to do it. 
Um, and also with the weight loss not being my primary focus, my focus is to not necessarily lose weight, but to manage my health. And weight loss is a byproduct of that. And so that's the most wonderful thing about it. So with this, I see that this is going to be a lifestyle for me. This is not something that I'm just doing for now. And then once I reach my goal weight, then I'll stop. No, this is how things are going to be. And that's why it's been really exciting for me that my husband's on board because he realizes also that we needed to do something better, not just me, but we all needed to change the way we were eating because um, even if you don't feel any effects now, I can promise you that if you're eating out a lot, if you're eating a lot of fast food, a lot of processed food, um, if you're eating a lot of saturated fats, a lot of sugar, um, a lot of sodium, I promise you it will catch up with you at some point. And so if you continue on that path, it is going to lead you to a place that you don't want to be. So you should try to cut it back. If you don't want to cut it out, at least cut it back um, a lot. And so for us, for me, I've cut it out completely. And sometimes you just got to be radical about things. Like someone was like, well, you can still have some here or there. You know, you could you could just have this a little bit, sometimes a little bit there. I was like, no, for me, at least right now, I can't have it. I have to cut it out completely. If I want something sweet, I can have some watermelon. I can have some pineapple. You know, I can have cantaloupe, you know, some honeydew, something like that. That's what I can have. I can't have a cupcake. I can't have a brownie. No, I can't because I can't. I just can't. That's not where I am right now. Maybe in a year, I might be in a place where I'm like, okay, I can have a few bites of a cupcake, but today I'm not at that place. No, I'm not. So, and I know that for myself. So I know that I'm doing what I need to do that's in my best interest right now. So I think that everyone should just be mindful of that. You know, when you're on your own journey, you do what's in your best interest. And if for you, you can say, well, I could have a cheat day and go have a Cinnabon or I could have a small cake. You know, there's a cupcake place right outside my neighborhood that's called Small Cakes. And they are absolutely delicious. And I drive past it almost every day. And it was a temptation for me. And it still is at times. Not so much as it was before though, but you know, I was like, you know, I have to decide what's the more important for me. And for me, it's more important to stick with my plan than to, you know, indulge myself in, you know, something that I just want right now. That, but I know that's not going to be beneficial for me. So I'd rather just, if I want something sweet, know that, okay, that's fine. I got watermelon in the house. That's going to be just as sweet, but better for me. So that's what I'm doing right now. So, okay, guys. So that's where I am with my weight, with my health. We're on the right track. I still have, you know, ways to go. I have um, another follow-up appointment in a couple months. We'll do more lab work, see where we are with things. But I am determined to not get caught up in this syndrome, this, um, what, do, what do we call it, the metabolic syndrome. I'm not claiming that. I do not have that. I'm not claiming it. I have some symptoms of it that I am working on reversing. And so that's where I am. I am I'm down on my weight and I'm going to continue to decrease it. It is my goal. It is my goal to lose 10 pounds every month. If I lose more than that, then thank you, God. <laughs> That's a blessing. I am so happy. But I I want to be realistic in things. Like I don't want to just be like, okay, I'm going to lose 20 pounds every month because I don't know that, that that will happen. But I feel like I could lose 10 pounds a month. So that's just about two pounds, a little bit over two pounds a week. Because that's four weeks in a month. So that's four, four weeks is, times two is eight pounds. So I'm like, if I lose two pounds a week, 
and then give or take maybe one week I might lose a little bit more or look two and a half pounds or two pounds and some ounces so I'm like if I could lose 10 pounds a month I think that's realistic and that's doable so that's the goal that I'm setting for myself and if I do more than that fantastic um, but if I only lose eight pounds a month then that's fine too if I lose five pounds a month then that's fine too that's five pounds a month that's bad that's five pounds down that's better than five pounds up <laughs> so and the goal is just to continue to trend downward because I want to um, just reverse any problems that I have created for myself because basically guys all the problems that I'm having are problems well, not all the problems but the problems that I'm having as it relates to this metabolic syndrome are problems that are caused by problems that we create ourselves by the foods that we put in our mouth so and that is just the real truth and that's what I had to get real with myself and saying you know what can you you know what a lot of this is your fault because you were eating the things that you knew you shouldn't have you were just like oh okay it's all good you're getting older like I, I don't even think about the fact that I'm getting older but I am getting older and I haven't been as active as I used to be and picking up weight and picking up weight only causes problems so I cause it so I can resolve it so and of course you know I'm relying on God I pray every day that God continues to give me the strength to do this to give me the willpower to say no when temptation is in front of me because everywhere you turn there's somebody offering you something oh you want this you want that I go to Costco they got samples of everything everywhere <laughs> you know I'm passing by the fast food places I got Addison saying mom can I have you know Chick-fil-A you know or whatever I'm like oh, oh Chick-fil-A does sound good but no we're not having Chick-fil-A we're not we're making better food choices these days so you know there's always temptation there's always something there but I just pray God you know help me make a better food choice give me the strength to say no when I want to have this when I'm not even thinking about food and all of a sudden something pops in my head I'm like ooh, I really would like to have a brownie or, Ooh, I would love to have a Cinnabon or ooh, I would love to have a whatever I would love to have sometimes I most random thoughts coming ahead I'm like oh I wouldn't mind having a hot dog it's like I don't even like hot dogs like that but now I want a hot dog like why would I want a hot dog so <laughs> um, but a lot of times when you have these food cravings it's not your mind telling you that it's your stomach saying you want these things because you know it's used to eating all the junk and so it's like get out of here I'm not having that no let me drink some water speaking of which let me grab my water because it's important to stay hydrated so so yeah so yeah and so throughout the process I'm just praying that God will continue to give me the strength to stay on track to stay focused to um, you know take better care of myself so that I can then take better care of my family. So alrighty guys, so now let's hop into the next portion of this video. I'm gonna be sharing with you guys a shopping haul and then some other things. Okay guys, so let's get into this grocery haul. So I have several items that I wanna share with you guys and some of them are new items that we're gonna be trying for the first time and I have a tasting plate down here of some items that we wanted to try out. So we'll get to that last, but first let me show you guys the groceries that we have. Some of the items are new and some you've seen before, like these bell peppers. You guys know I get these pretty much every time I go to the store. I like cooking with them. Um, I did also get sweet potatoes. You all know I like cooking with these as well. And I will say this, these groceries are from a mixture of stores. Some of these items are from Aldi, some are from Walmart, and some are from um, H E B. Um, so we did get some organic celery hearts. I like to get celery with the leaves on it, but my husband picked these up, so he got this one. Um, I did get these portobello mushroom mushrooms. I got these at Aldi, and I'm gonna give them a try. I will say, guys, I am not. Well, at least I think I'm not a fan of mushrooms, but because we're trying to do more of a plant-based diet. I want to give them a try as a meat alternative and so they had them for two dollars and I think 49 cents per package so I got two so you know the three of us 
this should be enough for the three of us. So, um, and they say they have hundreds of recipes on this website. So I'm going to check out their website at um, GiorgioFresh.com and see, you know, what they have. So anyway, I'm going to give them a try. I thought that was a good price also because they were quite more expensive at um, HEB. Also, I did, my husband picked this up, this large container of pure baking soda because we have so many fruits and veggies that um, we were looking online at ways to clean your veggies without having to necessarily buy organic. Because even though it says organic doesn't necessarily mean that it is organic and that they didn't spray it with pesticides, you don't know that for sure. So we still clean our veggies and fruit. And so we use a mixture of baking soda and lemons. So we just fill up the sink with water, sprinkle in some baking soda and squeeze lemons in it and then use a brush to brush everything off. So that's why I have this in the picture because I wanted to remember to tell you guys that you can clean your vegetables this way without having to buy the expensive sprays to clean your fruits and vegetables with. You can make your own and it's quite easy. We got this pineapple and guys, it is, smells so sweet. I'm so ready to cut it. It is ready to be cut too. And then we have another one that's more green that's not quite ready yet. So I like to get one that's ready to be used immediately. And then I'll get one that's, you know, not ready. So in a couple of days, we'll have another option. And then I have a bowl full of greens here. We have some parsley. This is romaine lettuce. This is um, a purple lettuce. This is a dino kale. And I'll pull this out. I left the tags on here in case I didn't remember the names of it. But we've been eating from this, so it's not much left. But here they call it Lacinto kale. But I've seen other people refer to it as dino kale. But you can see how bumpy it is. So it kind of looks like, you know, dinosaur skin. So that's why they call it that. And this is the, um, like I said, the red leaf lettuce. It's so pretty and this is really good for you to get all the nutrients in from different color uh, vegetables. So we got the dino kale here and this is another type of kale as well. Um, it is the red boar kale. This one is organic. We got this at Aldi, um, excuse me, not Aldi, at um, HEB. Pretty much all the leafy greens came from HEB. Unfortunately, stores like Aldi and Walmart has a few sometimes, but they don't usually have the variety of leafy greens like this. They'll just have the usual curly kale like this, which this is just a regular everyday curly kale. So we have a large bunch of that. Use all of this in a salad. Um, and also you can use it in your juicer. In our salad, we also like to add and it's down here on this end, but radishes. So we do have, I did grab a bag of radishes and I'll just take one and cut it up into slices or, in the, or into little chunks or little cubes and add it to the salad. We also have beets and guys, I'm not a fan of beets, although um, it it is tolerable <laughs> when we put it in the juicer. So, so we do have a couple of beets here. Um, and then we have, I bought some more ginger. I got this at Aldi. And I also picked up some more garlic. And then we have key limes. Now, normally I would just buy the regular limes. Like here we have our basket of lemons and limes. But I was watching um, a YouTuber that you guys may or may not have heard of. His name is Dr. Bobby Price. Shout out to him. I've been watching him a lot as it relates to eating a more healthy, um, he is plant-based, and so I'm kind of following along with him with, you know, his suggestions on things to eat. And he suggested key limes, and he was talking about their nutritional value. And so my husband picked this bag of key limes up, and you can, I don't know how much they cost. He got them at, at HEB, but you can see how small they are compared to, like, a regular lime. But these little guys are packed with so much nutrition compared to this one, which is still good too, but this guy is like a powerhouse. So, and we just squeeze it on top of our greens when we're having um, our salad, or I might squeeze it in my water bottle with some slices of ginger 
and just sip on that throughout the day or like first thing in the morning when I have my water, I'll have it with lime and ginger. Um, we also picked up a bag of carrots. Of course, you can shred some of the carrots and put it over your salad, but as it relates to the juicing, that's really why we have the carrots like this as well. Um, and you guys know I love, 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 um, oh shoot, I just said how much I love it, <laughs> cabbage. Um, so I'm always going to grab a cabbage because every time I'm at the store, I just pick up a cabbage because I really like to cook it in the oven. Like I just roast it in the oven with a little bit of olive oil, olive oil and salt and pepper. It's delicious. So we have a cabbage there. Now I'm going to slide you guys down here a bit so we can see the second half of our items here. Now we have a huge watermelon back here and we decided to get a big one this time. We normally get the smaller ones that's not seeded, but this time we wanted to get one with seeds um, because since we're gonna be doing juicing, we were reading about the benefits of watermelon, which are amazing. There's so many benefits. You guys, you should Google the health benefits of watermelon. It has so many vitamins, minerals, nutrients. It's very nutrient dense and you can juice all of it, the skin and everything, just cut into slices and juice the entire watermelon. Because even in the raw, in the skin of the watermelon, there's nutrients in there that you can benefit from, especially if you have high blood pressure like myself. And so, and the seeds, the black seeds in the watermelon also have nutrients that are beneficial. So that's why we got a seeded watermelon um, because we're gonna eat it and also we're gonna be juicing all of it as well. Now my husband bought this uh, papaya. I've never had papaya like fresh like this. Like I've had it like at a restaurant, like we went to a buffet and they might have it on the buffet or whatever. So I'm gonna cut this open with you guys today so we can see what it looks like inside. I have seen it cut open and it looks pretty gross. <laughs> so we'll do it here just to see. Cause I was like, I don't even know how to cut it open. I don't know how to eat it. I don't know what to do with it. I don't know if you're supposed to eat the skin or what. And so I figured there's probably some guy, some of you guys out there that's thinking the same thing. Like, how are you supposed to eat this? So we'll do that. And then we have this golden melon. It's a honeydew melon, but it is the golden variety. I'm looking here to see what it says. Golden honeydew melon, yes. So you cut this one open, <clears throat> excuse me, just like you would a regular cantaloupe or even like a watermelon. But of course, with the cantaloupe, you know, there's seeds in the middle, so you just cut it down the middle and then scoop all the seeds out and then you cut it into slices. So if you're familiar with cantaloupe, then you should know how to cut a honeydew melon. It's the same concept. But I wanted to give this one a try because it's golden. So I'm just curious to see if it's sweeter than a regular honeydew or a cantaloupe. Um, and we have some blueberries, strawberries, and of course, blackberries. I got these at Aldi. You guys know Aldi is my go-to when it comes to um, getting these berries <clears throat> because their prices are better than anywhere else. And they had the blue, the blackberries for $1.39. The strawberries were, I think, $1.99. And then the black, the blueberries were um, $1.49 on sale this week. Um, these are not organic. So, again, like I said, I wash everything. So... I just fill up the sink with water and wash everything and then rinse it all off. And then I put it in a bowl with lined with napkins and to dry, like toss them to dry. And then I put them in these little containers like this that I got from the dollar store. I put all of my berries and everything in containers like this. And then I sit them in the refrigerator. And these, I have been leaving them like this and sitting out, but that's why I wanted to get that basket. If you guys saw my live video, I did get a large fruit basket, so I'll put all of my fruit into this big basket that I'll show you guys here in a bit. But also, um, they had Rainier cherries, which you can see that we have eaten almost all of them. We did have a basket full, like we have a basket full of the regular cherries, but I love Rainier cherries, and apparently my husband does too, <laughs> because he was eating them like faster than me. I was like, oh my goodness, I didn't know you liked the Rainier cherries like that. So we've been eating cherries like a lot. Um, the Rainier cherries are a little bit sweeter than the regular black cherries or red cherries, but we do have cherries here. We all like to snack on those. 
Um, we have some peaches back here. You guys know I always get those. Of course, I always get mangoes. They're in season right now, so I always have mangoes. And then I have a basket here full of citrus fruit. So we have oranges, um, so two different types of oranges, like the little cutie oranges, the regular size oranges, and a couple of grapefruit there. And now on our tasting plate, so whenever we go into H-E-B, we let Addison pick fruit that he wants to try, like something new that he hasn't tried before. So this time, he wanted to try dragon fruit. So this is what dragon fruit looks like. This is half of it. And then when you cut it in half, this is the white one. They have red dragon fruit also where it's red inside with the black seeds. So we got this for him and he tried it and he likes it but i don't think he likes it that much it's not as sweet as he thought it would be or that even we thought it would be it is um, like a mild flavor fruit and as you can see it is filled with seeds there's a lot of seeds in it um but it has a very mild taste it doesn't taste bad it doesn't taste like anything really it just tastes like a really mild flavored fruit um so if you want to try it out you certainly can um, you won't not like it. You might just think, oh, it's very mild. Um, it, it has um, a little soft hint of maybe almost like a citrus flavor, I guess. Let me just let me just take a bite of it and see. You can see it peels right off the skin like that. And you can cut it into chunks or you can just break a piece off or take a bite of it. It's kind of like a kiwi. That's If you tasted kiwi before... It definitely puts you in the mind of kiwi as it relates to the texture and the taste. Just a really mild, very mild taste. Almost not much. Then we have pomegranate here. And probably many of you are familiar with pomegranate. If not, it is a huge fruit and we already pretty much devoured it. But it's a, it's big like the size of a grapefruit maybe. And we've eaten almost half of it, we, all of it. We cut it in half. This is what it looks like inside. And it's filled with seeds. So, and so you're supposed to eat the seeds. So you break a piece off and you just grab the seeds. Now the seeds, you put them in your mouth and you just eat the pulp that's around the seeds, the little red part. You eat the pulp around the seeds and then you have to spit the seeds out. And when you put them in your mouth, it's like a burst of flavor. This one is super sweet. I've had some before that were a little tart or a little bit sour maybe. But this one is very, very sweet. <clears throat> so that's what the seeds look like. So with this, you have to be careful with your children because if they don't know how to eat it, they may chew up the seeds and you don't want to do that. You just want to pop it in your mouth and just eat the fleshy part around the seed and then spit the seeds out. So that's pomegranate. And then we also have apricots. Now this was my first time eating fresh apricots. Um, I've had them dried many, many times, but this one's a red one and this one's just a standard one. And you can see they're fairly small. You just cut it open. And once you cut it, it kind of pops open and there's a seed inside. And you just remove the seed and then you can eat it from there. You can cut it into slices or you can just take a bite. And that's exactly the same with the smaller one. This one's a little bit sweeter than the regular apricot. The red one's a little bit sweeter, but the texture is like the texture of a peach. Um, so they taste really good. Um, they actually kind of taste like a peach too. They're not super sweet, but they are very juicy. Um, and the red one is a bit more sweet, but they're light in flavor and they're just very tasty. So if you want to have a fruit, something to maybe go with along with your um, with your breakfast shake, if you're having a protein shake, I wouldn't blend this in. I would eat it on the side. So with a, a mix of your blueberries and your strawberries, you can have a, a few slices of apricot with that. It will be a nice compliment. Or if you eat yogurt, if you have um, Greek yogurt, like a plain Greek yogurt, and you want to have fruit along with it, apricot will pair nicely with that as well. 
So it's an, it has a very nice flavor profile. So these were some of the new fruits that we tried. I've, I've been very familiar with, with um, pomegranate, but Addison wanted to give it a try. The dragon fruit and the apricots. All righty, guys. Now let's cut open this, uh, this guy here. We're going to get this one cut open and see what it looks like and what it tastes like, what it smells like, just everything. Okay, guys. So before we get into cutting into um, this fruit, I wanted to share with you the items from my Ross haul. If you saw my live a couple of days ago, I did share some items um, that from a collective haul, and I had some items from Ross that were more for the kitchen, and so I said I would share those with you when I was in the kitchen. So since I am here in the kitchen, I thought I would go ahead and share these items with you. If you were here for that live, I want you to leave me a, let me see, which emoji could you leave? Like a, maybe a watermelon, a pineapple, and um, an orange or something. So I would know that you guys saw the live video. So you were wanting to see the items that I got from Ross for the kitchen. You guys did see I had a large colander. And so these were items that I'll use in the kitchen that I didn't want to share at that time because I didn't want to have to unwrap it and everything. But I'm gonna share it with you here. So first things first, I did pick up this little rosemary infused olive oil there we go now you guys can see that it is by grand aroma and it is flavor extra virgin olive oil now normally i only want to get the olive oil that is cold pressed and i'm not seeing that this is or not but because it has rosemary in it and you can see it in there I thought, ooh, okay, I wanna give this a try. So it was $5.99 for this little bottle, so that's not really cheap, right? Because this is a tiny little bottle. Normally, I buy a huge bottle of, of olive oil because I cook with it quite often. But I wanted to give this a try. So I grabbed it up, and rosemary is also very good for you. It's a really good herb to incorporate into your diet. Um, so yeah. It says rosemary is a worldwide Italian seasoning, excellent on meats as well as grilled fish and potatoes. Enjoy. So, and you can also enjoy it on vegetables too, I'm gonna assume, because if you're grilling vegetables. So, yep, yeah, I grabbed that. I thought we'd give it a try. Then next here, I also picked up some black Himalayan salt. Now I did Google the benefits of this while I was in the store because I was like, wait a minute, have I heard of black Himalayan salt? Of course we all have heard of pink Himalayan salt. And of course I use that now. I don't use any other salt other than pink Himalayan uh, sea salt. But I did Google the benefits of this and they seem to be quite beneficial. Of course I can't remember any of those benefits right now off the top of my head. But I will say you guys should Google it yourself and see. Um, but it was enough for me to say, let me go ahead and grab this. And again, I had never seen black Himalayan salt before. And it was only $2.99 for this in Ross. So I grabbed it. And I could imagine that, you know, at HEB, this probably would have been easily double that price, if not more. And I love the aesthetic of the bottle. I thought it looked really nice. So I grabbed that. And then lastly, I picked up this um, olive oil. I mean, avocado oil, excuse me. Now I always use olive oil, but I do also like avocado oil. And again, I generally always get the cold pressed, um, but this one does not say that but I did want to get it because I also like to use avocado oil for my hair. And so at this price of $6.99, I thought that was reasonable enough that I could use it for my hair and not feel bad about it. So I grabbed this as well. So those were the kitchen items that I didn't share during my live, but I thought I'd share it with you when I'm here in the kitchen. So now I'll go ahead and cut up this fruit so you guys can see how you're supposed to cut 
this guy. Okay guys, so now we're cutting open the papaya and honestly I thought it was going to be kind of hard to cut open kind of like a watermelon, but it was very soft and I knew it was going to look kind of gross inside like it does, but oh my god, it smelled awful. It was so Ooh. disgusting. It smelled it like stinks. baby yes. vomit and my husband thought that it was uh, rancid, so we had to throw it out. He said those brown parts in the part where it's orange, he thought that was that part in there that he's pointing out, he thought that was expired. So we threw it away. So we'll try that another time. So now we're gonna go ahead and cut open the the yellow honeydew melon. And you know, like I mentioned before, this is simple to cut just like any honeydew melon or just like any cantaloupe. You just cut it down the center. It has all the seeds inside and you just scoop those out. And now we'll cut it down the center so that we'll have it in halves. And we'll basically cut each half. We'll cut the flesh of the fruit away from the skin. And then we'll cut it into chunks and add it to our bowl. And that'll be really simple and easy. Okay guys, so I hope that you all have enjoyed this video. If so, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. You know that helps me out tremendously. Also, it helps me leave comments. So be sure to leave a comment down below to let me know what you think about everything you've seen here today and the things that you've heard here today. Let me know, have you heard of metabolic syndrome? If you have, let me know in the comments. I gotta say guys, I had never heard of it before. And you all know that I work in healthcare, but obviously I don't know everything. <laughs> um, and it was a term that I had never really heard before and I was surprised to hear it in regards to my own health. So you already know your girl was like, oh, uh-uh, we're not having that. We got to get busy. So yes, we are on track and on target to turn things around in my life. And so I hope that you are inspired to do the same for yourself if that's what you need to do. Alrighty guys, also if you are new here, welcome. Thank you so, so much for stopping by. I hope that you will go ahead and click that subscribe button and also be sure to hit the notification bell so you will not miss any upcoming videos. For my faithful family members, you all know I love you, love you so, so, so very much. And of course, I look forward to seeing all of you on the next video. Much love and many blessings. Bye-bye.